What myth is still widely circulated as truth? That you have to wait 24 hours before you can report a missing person. If someone is missing, go get help. The widespread knowledge of 24 hours waiting periods is a myth based in TV and movies where the family spends precious time frantically searching without assistance. It is not true in most locales and is virtually never required for missing juveniles or seniors with dementia. A missing person is closest to home, most likely still alive, and most likely still surrounded by clues and evidence within the first 24 hours. It is critically important that you engage the police as soon as your loved one is inaccessible or profoundly late. Did a report on why the first 72 hours in a missing person case are critical. They emphasize that it is not necessary to wait 24 hours before filing a report. Calls the waiting period a myth. There is no waiting period. Many shows and movies have publicized the 24 or 48 hour waiting period to report missing people but that doesn't exist in real police offices. As soon as you know an adult or child is missing, report it to police. Child Find of America calls this waiting period a myth. They advise contacting local police immediately. And those police departments that do require waiting periods do not require them for juveniles. Web link. If an HIV positive person has sex with another HIV positive person, they don't have to worry about protection. They do, because there are 140 different strains of the HIV AIDS virus, and getting infected with another strain, especially a potentially deadlier one, could be dangerous. Also, pregnancy is still a very big risk for HIV positive women. If you are considering a sexual relationship, get tested, and talk to your doctor about birth control. Just want to point out that women can be HIV positive while pregnant and not pass on HIV to their baby as long as they take the correct medications during pregnancy. They can even have a vaginal delivery if their viral loads are low at the time of the birth. This obviously doesn't address someone just not wanting to get pregnant but lots of people also believe that you can't responsibly continue a pregnancy if you're HIV positive and that's also false. Edit, I have never gotten an award before and now I got one for being helpful. Thank you, kind stranger. I am happier about this than should be possible over fake internet awards. People in general though the world was flat until Columbus sailed the ocean blue. No, the ancient world figured that out a long time before. People just thought that it was impossible to sail across the ocean to Asia because sailors would run out of food by then, while Columbus thought that wasn't case because he thought Asia was bigger than contemporary estimates. He actually thought the diameter of Earth was much smaller than contemporary estimates, too. He was very wrong, the standard estimates were accurate, but he got lucky. Not even contemporary estimates, Eratosthenes had done a pretty good estimate in the 3rd century BCE. Lemmings commit mass suicide perhaps the most influential and, for the lemmings involved, tragic, presentation of the myth was the 1958 Disney film, which won in and in which producers threw lemmings off a cliff to their deaths to fake footage of a mass suicide, as well as fake scenes of mass migration. Web link. Human are really bad at committing confirmation bias. Lemmings aren't running off of cliffs by themselves. Hurl them off rather than reconsider that detail. Sounds like we're really good at it. I don't understand. They literally just did it for the spectacle? That is evil. I was adamantly told by some seniors at work not to drink the water that boiled twice because it cooks the oxygen out of it. What is with seniors and water that's been boiled twice? My grandmother used to say that it would make the water radioactive, I still can't wrap my head around the fact that a woman that had been a chemist her entire working life believed this. Though I've heard others who grew up in the Soviet Union, like my grandmother, echo this so perhaps it's some silly propaganda that stuck. I would love it if it turned out that it started as propaganda to reduce power consumption by the populace. Like how fans in Korea can kill you by chopping up all that oxygen. That you can reduce fat from a particular body part. I always laugh at those electric belly jigglers. I got one just to cry and watch my fat jiggle. Then why do I have a goddamn needle dick? It's obviously because I work it out so much. He may have a needle dick but he f's like a sewing machine. One wrong move and snap. 
That shaving makes your beard grow better. When I was a teenager, a lot of people told me that shaving would make my beard grow faster. Well, I didn't want to shave any more than I absolutely had to, so I often went weeks at a time without shaving. It wasn't the best look for me. The idea was that a teenager who'd keep patchy growth on would really want good facial hair, so the whole shave it to make it more prominent was just a clever way for adults to convince teenagers to keep that dirt stash off. I thought of the entire concept of facial hair as a lot of work I didn't want to deal with, so shave more often and it'll grow back faster made me never want to shave at all. I was kind of lazy back then. I'm 32 and I still hate shaving. Straight razor, electric, doesn't matter. Hate it hate it hate it. The cruel irony of it all is that my wife's skin is super sensitive and gets rashes if I don't shave often enough. Same goes for my kids. How often do the kids need to shave? That one I've heard repeatedly is shaving makes your hair grow back thicker. I have had lengthy arguments with more than one person about this. Bulls hate red. They are actually colorblind and are reacting to the movement of the cloth and the butthole behind it. You also got to keep in mind those bulls are poorly treated and usually given some kind of stimulants. Bulls on our ranch are actually quite friendly as long as it's not breeding season. Can confirm. I once had a bull knock me over and stand above me because he wanted chest scratches. He was a big baby that wanted what he wanted, when he wanted it. Edit, did not expect this to blow up. I am at work and can't do detailed responses or additional stories at this time. Sorry. See below for the tale of Blue, my guard goat. Based on this, seems like bulls are still figuring out what consent is. This is accurate. We had numerous issues with this bull all related to how much he enjoyed physical attention like scratches. He was also fully aware that he could overpower any human, so if you were in his pen and not scratching him, you were going to be real soon. Wonder how he'd react to someone he couldn't overpower. Although there's probably not a real person out there who could overpower a strong bull. I once saw him spend a few hours trying to take down a tree that was in his way, so I assume it'd be like that. The first comment was the best, but I'm glad I continued reading the thread because this is hilarious lol. That the US spent over a million dollars in two years to develop a pen that could work in space, whereas the Soviets decided to just use a pencil. In the early days, both used pencils, but since pencils are made out of graphite, and graphite is conductive, snapped graphite particles are dangerous in a pressurized face capsule, to put it lightly. Fisher, the owner of the pen company, spent his own money to develop a pressurized ballpoint pen. And cost only about $3 per pen. Edit, I was wrong on the price, the pens first cost about $6 per pen for NASA. Edit 2, did some digging on the grease pens, apparently the thought was that they wouldn't be durable enough on paper, and the paper shroud of the grease pen would still need to be disposed of and thought it might be a problem. My understanding is that the pencils were grease pencils. Different, safer, than regular pencils, but still somewhat dangerous and annoying to use. Urine neutralizes jellyfish stings. Use vinegar instead. That stuff will actually save you, at least long enough for an ambulance to arrive. Can confirm that vinegar helps a lot. Also warm salt water as well. Both helped a lot when I got stung. Who had vinegar at the beach? The lifeguards? In an area with deadly varieties of jellyfish, okay I'll say it Australia, you would frequently find bottles of vinegar tied up to posts and lifeguard towers on the beach. Edit. Since this blow up and thanks for the awards. This is mostly a thing in North Australia with the prevalence of box jellyfish and irukandji. I've seen the same thing in parts of Southeast Asia. Box jellyfish are an issue where I live but they are mostly seasonal so no one swims in the ocean between October and May. Most don't swim in the ocean at all. Till thanks. That damn friends episode. If I had to I'd pee on any one of you. Joey kept screaming at me do it do it now do it do it do it. Sometimes at night I still hear it. That's because sometimes I just do it through my wall to freak you out. Gum takes 7 years to digest. 
Catherine the Great died after attempting to have sex with a horse. This myth was started by the French. And then they ask why everyone believes Napoleon was a tiny, tiny man. Napoleon being small was a myth started by the British. He wasn't actually short for his time if I remember correctly he was a bit above average in terms of height. It's true. He was roughly 5 apostrophe 7 which was very above average for the time edit, I would like to clarify, 5 apostrophe 7 was indeed above average for commoners. And many of you have pointed out that he was an aristocrat. But his family was not wealthy as they were only minor nobility. As a child his family likely didn't have the means to be able to provide the proper nutrition in order for him to be on par height-wise with other aristocrats. Also, his guard had to be over six so he was always around people taller than him. Also, when he was sized up after his death by the doctor on the island, he was sized up with French inches and feet which are slightly bigger than imperial inches and feet. I'm concerned that this entire thread is widely circulated myth because it's like every lunchroom table, dorm kitchen, and bar top conversation about Napoleon goes exactly like this. Imagine waging a war against Europe, changing European society, and you're more remembered for being a shorty. I love the way that rumor came into play on the plot of The Great on Hulu. Not the most historically accurate show, that's for sure, but it was a lot of fun. ETA, that said. I could have easily gone my whole life without watching a sex scene featuring Klaus Baudelaire. No thank you, Hulu. Scientists don't know how bees fly. Scientists discover bees aren't airplanes or birds. That's because flies fly. Whereas bees be. They do be. Do be do be do. According to all known laws of aviation, you, with the physics, get out of here. It's a mystery. I read this in Dr. Zoidberg's voice, Lobster. Now I'm thinking about the Bee movie, but narrated by Dr. Zoidberg. It's not that they don't know now, it's that up until really recently it wasn't fully understood this article is from this century, web link. Undercover police have to tell you they are policemen when you ask them. Breaking Bad has a great scene where an undercover cop tricks a guy into selling him drugs using this myth. I thought we were going to hang out. Poor Badger. The new guy really did him like that. Sounds like a perfect rumor for cops to spread. That we only use 10% of our brain edit, thanks for the awards, all my first, and the upvotes. Subtract 10 from how many I have and that's the most I've ever gotten on a comment, smiley face. My cousin had a roommate who thought this and tried to use 100% of his brain to run through a wall. Guess some people do use 10% of their brain. And now that guy use 100% of his brain. What's left of it, anyways? I love the idea that using more of his brain would somehow let him think his way through a wall probably just watched Lucy. During spring break in my freshman year of college, I got into an argument with someone who was adamant that Lucy accurately modeled what the human brain is capable of. If we could harness 100% of the power of our minds, time would slow down and it would appear to you as if I had super speed, he mumbled. He drunkenly started to twirl a big ass bowie knife, showcasing the capabilities and limits of the drunken mind. Like I'm pretty sure using 100%, of your brain is called a seizure lull, but I eventually gave up trying to convince him otherwise. I've told this story a lot but if you want to experience what that is like, there is a way that doesn't require drugs, just an afternoon. Step 1, get the YouTube playback speed control extension for Chrome. Step 2, watch an 8-hour instructional video at 3x speed in a single sitting such as Professor Messer's Network Plus series on YouTube. It's okay to start off at 1.5 but as you get comfortable keep ramping up the speed. I specifically recommend Professor Messer's videos because he speaks clearly and so it's easy for your brain to adapt to taking in that information at a higher rate. Captions are also helpful. Step 3, at the end of the roughly 3 hour 3x speed information fest move your hand to stop the video. Eons will pass as your arm lifts off of the chair and reaches out to the mouse. Your brain will have gotten so used to absorbing information at 3x speed that normal speed will feel like one-third of its normal self, 
and you will be stuck dealing with that for at least 15 to 30 minutes. Get in your car and take a drive, watch how driving 60 miles an hour feels only a little faster than walking. I've done this. It was terrible, and I would never recommend anyone to do it except to know what it is like. Until you've experienced it yourself you have no frame of reference before the agony and hilarity of it all. So you're saying YouTube can get you high on speed? I am speed. Do people still really believe that? Might as well give them a degree in phrenology then. I prefer retro phrenology. Instead of reading bumps on the head and deducing things about the person, you take a small hammer and put bumps on the head to give person the things they want about themselves. Edit. Wow. Thanks for all the rewards anonymous internet people. But all props ultimately go to Sir Terry Pratchett. Something about touching baby birds and their parents abandoning them due to the smell of human touch edit, after reading through several replies, perhaps there is some truth to this based on the animal. One time my son came home smelling like a bird and I told him to get the hell out and never come back. Nobody wants a chicken ever for a son. Sure, you F1 chicken and all of a sudden you're a chicken effer. Look, I swear it was just morbid curiosity, I don't actually want to F chickens all that often. Sure, it might just be one chicken. But you haven't stopped effing IT for months. You're not my real dad. Oh my god. My real dad is a rooster, ISNTIT. You got cluck colded. The idea behind this statement was so that you don't get attached to wild animals, and that not all animals can be domesticated. It's more so a deterrent than it to be true as with some of these other popular wrong truths. It's a convenient lie which kids will accept without having the reasoning skills to consider. Thank you for watching. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube. And share them with your friends. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. We welcome your comments below. Another of our videos will begin shortly.